Newcastle, a mecca for stag and hen parties. <laughs> it's the last Friday of the month, payday, and hundreds of revellers are arriving at the station for the start of a big night out. In the afternoon, there are hens aplenty flouncing on and off trains. We're getting married, mate. And ever alert to the call to action, Banana Man, <laughs> who's less alert than a superhero should be. I'd always wear clean pants, kids. <laughs> <laughs> with the southbound passengers out of his hair, Daz has still to deal with the northbound passengers stranded on the other platforms. Their trains are still not running, but although many are dressed up with nowhere to go, some have come prepared. We've got some gin and tins and... <laughs> if only the lads were as well organised. We're here on a stag do. 22 people, the only person that looked, caught the last train north was the stag, who's now at Edinburgh Station on his own in a kill, dressed like Mel Gibson. <laughs> Alan was expecting the Sunderland fans to be in high spirits, maybe even a little rowdy, but he wasn't expecting them to be singing Italian opera. <laughs> But it's not the fans on their way to today's games that are the biggest concern. It's the clowning around on the way home that can cause problems. Yeah, we'll try to behave, but jumping about the train, yeah. probably. Especially yeah. if we get a result today, we'll, uh, we'll definitely have a good time on the train on the way back. Basically, we're, do we're doing a walk through the train. Obviously, anybody with any drink will either take it off them or let you know what we're doing. If we'll come back and there's more drink, then you'll be dealt with the offence, because it is a dry train and it is an offence to bring drink on the train. All right. All right. It was a dry train, but I'm not like some mentalist that's going to kick off all over. I'm like 51 year old, travelling with a couple of mates, a couple of drinks, not a problem. You know, so why should I be treated like a kid? Most fans going to away games heed the warnings and respect dry trains, but some still try to beat the band by hiding their booze, like this lot, who have cunningly concealed their stash of spirits. Nice try, guys. No, no alcohol at all. Okay. Oh, me back. <laughs> the situation there was, I was just generally talking to Sunderland fans that it was an alcohol-free train. And as he changed hands with his McDonald's, the bag split and three or four miniatures of whiskey dropped out, uh, much to his embarrassment, to be honest. This customer is a bit hot under his collar. He claims he put his money in the machine, but it failed to produce a ticket. I put money into the machine and the machine's eight of my money and hasn't given my ticket. And the man don't seem to be believing it or something, so I don't know. I've missed the first train, so I'm gonna have to catch the second train now. I'm trying to get to Peterborough. 31 pounds on a ticket and... Joe's manager has gone to check for signs of the transaction. He pulled something out. He definitely pulled something out. What did he do then? I don't know. Go back. Shift manager Julie reviews the tapes. If that's the case, he's done a car transaction and it hasn't gone through. He's trying to say it's cash. Uh, we're just going to go and speak to the customer. We're going to suggest that we take his name and address details and we'll do a full cash audit on the um, fast ticket machine tomorrow. And if the cash machine has got more money in it than it should have, then I'll contact the customer and he can come back for his money. Passenger has seemingly, well, vanished into thin air. En route to the station, the Victoria's Sunderland fans taunt their Newcastle rivals who are growing increasingly agitated. Yeah, for information, we've got large crowds, repeat, large crowds uh, at the top of the west end of Newcastle Central Station, possibly estimate about 200, 250. Suddenly, a large group of Newcastle fans break through into the station on the hunt for their rivals. Apparently, we've got a load of supporters coming down there, jumping over the barriers. Stop! 
handlers to the front end of the station. Dog handlers to the front of the station. Some supporters start throwing things at the police. Hey, oh, Charlie, the member officers, draw your bayons! Draw your bayons! Something! Missile's been thrown! Missile's been thrown! Still determined to get at the Sunderland supporters, some Newcastle fans have begun to surround the station. Finally, the Sunderland supporters board their trains. Nothing good. The skirmishes have left a trail of devastation. I did tell you, it does kick off when we get a result like this. As you can see by the damage and the missiles that's been thrown. Even some vehicles in the staff car park have been damaged. I think this is one of the worst hit ones. You can see the dent in the car. Well, they used these cars here to jump up onto the roofs to get the leverage over the fence. And that's what's how they've actually gotten onto the station, because this is all cordoned off. But there's about four or five cars there that's, that's damaged.